Good morning, guys. Ten minutes. B'shut Kudal, B'shut Chem. There's a. We'll continue learning the Mizmorim we recite every day. One of the famous Mizmorim that are said worldwide, B'shat Sara, is Mizmor Kuf Lamid, the 130 Psalms of Tehillim. And the Mizmor is called Mimam Akim Kiraticha Hashem. From the depths, I will call to you, Akadash Baruch Hu. And really, the source that of this Mizmor, or to say B'Shat Sarah, is already in a Mishnah in Masechet Ta'anit. The Mishnah in Masechet Ta'anit says that if there's a drought, and God forbid there's a long period of time where it does not rain, then what they would do is they would fast on Monday, Thursday, and Monday, three times. And if it still didn't rain, they would do three more fasts. And if it still did not rain, then they would add seven more fasts. A total of 13 fasts. And the Mishnah says there that they would add six prayers to the tefillah. So they would say a total of 24 brachot prior to the addition of the 19th bracha of And one of the brachot, the Mishnah says, they would recite this with Mom Ma'amakim Kiraticha Hashem. Yeah? So what does it mean, Ma'amakim? What do you guys think? What's Ma'amakim? What depth? So the Pshat, the Gemara learns from here. The Zigma in Brachot of Yudah Mudbet. Amar Rabbi Yossi Ba'abi Hanina. Asulu la'adam nitpalel b'mkom gavua. Person is not allowed to pray from a high elevated place. Shneimam mimamakim kiraticha Hashem. Ela mimakom namuk dafka a low place, the Chazan should stand. So literally in, the, in those times, the Chazan, it says, Ha'over lifnei ha'teva. Ha'yored lifnei ha'teva. They used to literally go down steps and pray just to be mekayem the pasuk mi ma'amakim. But it would have been enough to just say, to say, mi ha'omek kirati Hashem. From the depth. Why does it say the depth? In plural tense. So the, the Gomri Vilna is medayek. From the depths. If one is literally, logistically, your body should be in a low place. To show that you should uh, succumb yourself before Hashem. You should be humbled and have humility. Very good. So it's a mentality really. But secondly, it's referring to the depths of your heart. You have to scream to HaKadosh Baruch from Mi'om Kalev, from the depths, depths of a person's heart. So it's very interesting. This, there's famously, many people say daily, or others say once in a while, Perik Shira. And Perik Shira was written by, already for thousands of years, and it's being recited, been recited by many, many people. It's, there's a source from Chazal to say it. And there's, Three, there's many chapters. In the third chapter, it goes through the entire creation of the world and what every animal and every creature and plant, what mizmo they say to praise Borei Olam. Many of them are from Tehilim, others are from Psukim, from the Torah, and the Nevi'im and Ketuvim. The Chita, the wheat, what mizmo does it recite? Anyone want to take a wild guess? No, good try. I thought you'd figure the mizmo we're learning. Good job. So if you guessed 130, then you guessed right. And Rav Chaim Kanievsky asks, what is the significance? He has a pirush on Tehilim, Rav Shalom. And he asks, what's the significance of chita, wheat, singing this mizmo specifically? And he writes that there's an interesting characteristic about wheat that all other plants do not have. He brings a source from Chazal, like every word he says is obviously a source from Chazal. And he says that all the plants grow from Adama. Therefore, we bless them in Peri Adama, because they grow on the surface of the land. If not, they go in about three tefachim, 24 centimeters deep. But Chazal say, I don't know if this is proven to be so today. I'm sure it is. If Chazal say it, or if it's there's maybe a deeper meaning. But they say that the chita could go up to 50 amot deep and still sprout. 50 amot. That's 75 feet deep in the ground, and it could still grow. And it's only one of the plants to do so. And that's why we bless Hamotzi Lech and Mina Aretz. Not Mina Adama, Mina Aretz, because it goes to the depths of the ground. You put the seed 50 feet down. Yeah, it will still sprout. All, any other plant, there's a certain depth it could go to. And that's why, that's why it's Mima Makim Ketiha Hashem is referring to the Chita. But it says of Chaim Kanevsky a different element of the Chita. Like any other plant, before it sprouts, it has to decompose. And we have to understand that in any true growth in life, if you want to build a building, you could build one story. But if you want, you have to have a foundation. You have to dig deep to go up. But the, deep, the higher up the high rise is, 
the higher up you want to go, the deeper you have to dig. And therefore, the Maharal Prague writes that the, the essence of Am Yisrael is we have to be decomposed before sprouting and growing. We have to be ripped apart before we can grow. And he says that's why HaKadosh Baruch first put us in Egypt prior to taking us out and he gave us, he let us grow. He writes that that's how every real, the, the physics, the anatomy behind everything that is, even the light, before light comes darkness. It says in the creation of the world that the world was choshech al penet Why did Hashem have to create darkness before He created light? Without light, it's already dark. Why does He have to say, no, no, Hashem created choshech al penet Says the Ma'aral also, because before light comes darkness. And before sprouting, there has to be a decomposition of, of the element completely to nothingness, and then only does it grow. No, Hashem created darkness, and that's the way He created the world, because after that darkness comes a great light. Right? Nothing, but it wasn't even, it was... A female, beautiful. So, Very good, 100%. And the Ma'arami Prague stresses it in many, many proofs. I don't have time to say it. There's a famous Chazal in the end of Masayid Makot, Rabbi Akiva, when all the Chachamim laughed. We all are familiar with this Gemara. Where everybody, sorry, everybody cried and he laughed. And he told them a Pasuk that Zion, Zion, Zion will be, God forbid, plowed like, like a field that's literally plowed. How do you plow? You take metal, things and you rip up the ground and you tear it up and and only then does could the Beit HaMikdash be rebuilt or Tzion could be rebuilt so says of Chaim Kanievsky that that is the essence and that's really what this Mizmo is teaching us that before any growth in Amisrael we have to go through decomposition and hopefully this was our last one and we mamash went through something that is unbearable and it's very very difficult to, to describe and the more we think about it although many days have passed and people start getting back to their normal lives and we get desensitized to what's going on. But really nothing has changed. The opposite, the, every day that goes on, things get more difficult for us. So we have to wake ourselves up. So let's learn the Pshat of the Mizmo. The song of ascents that we said there's 15 of them corresponding to the 15 Madrigot, the 15 steps in the Beit HaMikdash. From the depths, I shall call you Hashem. Adonai Shima Bekoli, Hashem, please listen to my voice. Tiena Oznecha Kashuvot. May your ears, obviously it's a figure of speech, listen to my prayers. Lekol Tahanunai, to the voice of my supplications, to the voice of my begging. Tahinaz, when somebody begs. Avimech repeated three different types of prayers here. So Tfilah is not lip service. It's, not, it's called Avodah Balev. It's pouring your heart literally into Filah. So that's why he's saying my supplications, my begging before you. Hashem, if you hold on to my sins, if you keep them, Hashem, who will stand? Chazal say in Masechet Archin that even Avot Olam, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, if Hashem were to come and judge them based on their actions to the full full throttle of the deen of what they deserve, they cannot stand in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's judgment. Which is a crazy thing to say. And Chazal learned from this. Mi Amod, nobody in the world could withstand the judgment of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ki Hashem, with you is forgiveness. Leman Tivare, you gave us the opportunity to forgiveness so that we learn to fear you. Hashem created a world, we bless every day. Baruch Ata Hashem, Chanun Amar Ben Yisloach. We say B'Shem HaMalchut. Hashem literally wants to forgive us. We have to ask for forgiveness. And the reason David Amir threw this here in the Mizmo is because usually, almost always, when Yisurim come on a person, Chazal teaches in Brachot Dafhei, Im Adam Reh She Yisurim Baim Alav, Itle Bebitul Torah. Pishpesh Velo Matza, what should he do? If Ashpesh Be Maasav. If he did, he's not Mevatel Torah, which who could say that he doesn't do that, then he should. You should take account of his actions and look at the actions he does throughout his daily, his daily life. Says David Amir, Kiviti Adonai Kivita Nafshi, Viridvo Halti. I anticipated God's salvation. Kivita Nafshi, my soul awaits you. Not just I anticipate. My whole entity, my whole being 
anticipates the, the salvation of Hashem. To the words of Hashem, I literally am eager and wait for it. I give my soul to Hashem. I will dedicate my life to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I wait for the morning. Because obviously in the time of Ma'amakim Keraticha, it's Et Sara, And therefore it's referring to time of darkness. So I wait for the morning, I wait for the morning. He repeats it because he's saying how eager he is and how, how much he awaits. The Evan Ezra says that this is referring to the Geula Shalema. And this is the Amisa recite this in the Galut. And waiting for the morning is referring to the Geula Shalema. Yachel Yisrael el Adonai, ki ma Adonai chesed v'abeim of Yaduk. Amisa, you should wait for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. For with Hashem is loving kindness. Hashem chesed v'abeim of Yaduk. He has much capability of redeeming us. And He will save Am Yisrael from all of their afflictions and difficulties. Right, because that is the source. So just one, one last story, but I want one story to conclude. In the First World, World War, the Hafez Chaim, unfortunately many, many Jewish men were called to go out to war and they took them against their will. It wasn't optional, they had to go. And as they went out to war, they were there and there was no news, no way of being in contact with them. And they went for years, literally. And a lot of the women came crying to the Hafez Chaim, begging for words of advice, words of inspiration. And the Hafez Chaim sat and cried with them. And I forgot the rabbi's name who said over the story, Rabbi Eli Melech Biederman brings it in the name of the rabbi who witnessed, who heard this from the Hafez Chaim, who told it over. But he said that the Chafet Saim started crying with them hysterically. And at that moment, as he was shedding tears, the women said, Rabbi, what should we do? So what should we do? We have to run immediately to the Beit HaMidash, open the Echad, and, and pour our hearts to Hashem. He said, okay, what should we recite? What prayers? He said, we're not so used to. Sometimes we say, in Nerot Shabbat, we have a tefillah. In Kabbalat Shabbat, we have a tefillah. In Motzei Shabbat, there's a prayer. What, what text should we say? He said, text? He says, if a kid is thirsty, and he's, or he's hungry, and he wants to ask his mom, he's going to open up a book and start reciting words or a text to his mom or dad. He says, you know what he does? He does the only thing he knows how to do. He just screams. Abba, help me. So that's what you have to do. Scream the words of your heart. That's literally all you have to do. And that's what we should do. Scream your own words. Pour your heart to Hashem. Throughout our day, we might have to go on to work. We are had the Mim and we didn't work much. We all have to go to our daily routine, maybe somewhat. But Rabotai, please do not live your life regularly. And every moment you see Kobe over here, every second, popping up the chat with another Mizmo he reads, another Mizmo of Tehilim, another effort to, to try and pray. Promise her. Rabotai, it's not about how many you do, it's about the fact that you do it many times throughout the day. Literally, if you do one, 20 times a day, it's better than we're saying 20 at once. Because that shows that in 20 different moments of your day, you thought about the Chayim. You thought about the, the fact that Am Yisrael are going through times of difficulty. And it shows that you are, you're no seba olim chavecha. That's all we have to do. That's really the only weapon we have. To show that our heart is at pain for all of Am Yisrael. Hashem, we should see Rachamim Gedolim from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We already see Rachamim. The, there's two ways to go about this. One, one person or one type of person could go and start complaining, Hashem, what are you doing? Or the other could feel literally uplifted, so uplifted, like we all do feel, and so connected to Hashem, and we understand that there's nobody to turn to other than Hashem. And that is the route that we should take, we should be the, the latter, and we should always take this as a boost, and literally a catapult to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and connect all of Amisad together. <laughs>